This is Channel 2 News at 5. Good evening, everyone. I'm Jeff Gianola. And I'm Julie Emery. Topping our news at this hour, the search continues at this hour for eight people still missing on Mount Hood. Three climbers were brought down from the mountain this morning. Two of them have died. Jim Hyde is standing by live on Mount Hood with the latest. Jim? Julie, I'm here at Timberline Lodge, about 6,000 feet up the south side of Mount Hood. Weather is clear. The winds are lighter today. Searchers have been looking for those 11 people since uh, before dawn this morning. Mem 11 members of the Oregon Episcopal School Climbing Group. They did find three bodies just before 6 a.m., but they have not found the other eight climbers. Helicopters have been shuttling searchers higher up the mountain all day. There are more than 100 people looking now. Helicopter crews are from the 304th Air Rescue Squadron, plus mountain rescue teams from the Portland and Corvallis, and from the Forest Service. The three bodies found before dawn today may have been trying to leave the snow cave where all 11 people were last known it to be. It appears that the eight remaining people walked out or walked decided out. To, to take off on their own. This afternoon, Clackamas County Sheriff's Officer said several possible snow caves were found, but no more people. As the day wore on, the sun softened the snow. Two searchers did fall into a crevasse. They were not hurt, however. Crews found a single glove in the White River Glacier area. One source tells us that that glove may belong to one of the three people who have already been brought down to Portland. Meantime, parents and friends of the missing are hoping for the best, but that hope is fading after a full day of looking in nearly ideal conditions. The headmaster of the Oregon the Episcopal School time. has uh, been with those people. with great dignity and uh, with a lot of love for one another and compassion and a lot of patience, a lot of strength. We said mass first thing this morning together. We said prayers together. Um, Our, some sort of, I have talked to some people about practical things with respect to death and dying. Daybreak brought clear skies and lighter winds. Parents who had been waiting through the night were encouraged. They could see the ridge where their children were believed to be. So could crewmen from the 304th Air Rescue Squadron. Searchers in the helicopters relayed information to headquarters at the ski lodge. The first word, survivors spotted, came in just before 6 a.m. It proved to be false. Minutes later, the first harsh reality of the day was heard. Uh, Sergeant Hunter, I copy. We're at one of the victims right now. Would you want us to stay here or just keep moving up? Over. Before 9 a.m., the leader of the search team confirmed the bad news. Uh, we just so far have found uh, uh, three deceased individuals up there. No snow cave was found, just a sleeping bag. The three bodies were discovered nearby at about 8,200 feet elevation. The unidentified bodies were taken by life flight helicopter to Portland hospitals for a desperate attempt to somehow try to revive them. Searchers continued to crisscross the mountain looking for the other eight. Yesterday, Mount Hood was being ravaged by high winds and blowing snow. It was impossible for searchers to see anything. Today, they have a view of the entire mountain, so it is all that more ominous that they are finding no survivors. I think we, uh, they might be uh, huddled down into an area, you know, in some rocks or something, and they are, uh, just haven't got up as yet, or they might be past where we're at right here and down in the treed area, and we're not be able to see them because they're in the, uh, in the trees, and that's why we're going to have people on snowshoes and skis that go all the way down. That is the optimism that keeps searchers going and the hope that draws parents and friends of the Oregon Episcopal School climbers to the slopes of Mount Hood. Jim Hyde, Channel 2 News. This has been the longest of days for the families. I visited with some of them earlier today. They have been extraordinarily strong and patient. Father Manson is right. We still hope that their patience may somehow yet be rewarded. Jeff, Julie. All right, thank you, Jim. We can always still hope. Thank you. Jim Hyde reporting from Timberline Lodge. Well, after the three students were found on Mount Hood this morning, they were airlifted to Emanuel Hospital for medical attention. Two of the students were brought in by Life Flight helicopter. The third was airlifted by the 304th Air Rescue Squadron. Doctors say when the three arrived, their body core temperatures were 7 degrees centigrade, about 45 degrees Fahrenheit. 98.6 is normal. Doctors then began the slow process of rewarming the bodies of the three to see what condition 
they were in. Paula Gunnis is at the hospital. We'll be checking in with her a little bit later in this newscast. Julie? Well, right now we want to check in with Paula Gunnis, who's standing by live at Emanuel Hospital. And Paula, we understand two of the teenagers who were taken to Emanuel out of the three that arrived there earlier today from Mount Hood, two of those teenagers have now died. Do you have any more information? Well, Jeff, doctors have uh, done a valiant job trying to save the lives of two of those teenagers who were brought here this morning. When the three were brought in, the, their body core temperatures were abnormally low. The two girls that were brought in, their temperatures were 7 and 8 degrees centigrade. The boy was about 15. They were all put on heart-lung machines, and doctors worked on the girls for four and a half hours but could not get any response. The boy's core temperature has now been raised to 28 degrees centigrade. He is on a heart-lung machine, but he has no kidney function at this time, but doctors still aren't being too optimistic about his chances. I would say about 10% uh, because he is because he is so cold. The two girls have not been identified? No, they have, the girls have not been identified. We, we think that we have an idea who they are, but we're not, we're not absolutely sure until we start talk with the parents. Now, even at this hour, as you just heard, none of those three have been identified. And doctors say that's because they were in such cold temperatures for such a long time that their faces were disfigured. And so doctors still have not been able to figure out who they are. That's why parents have not been notified. They're now going into the process of trying to look at school records, identify some of the clothing they had on, and talk with some of the friends. Now, the boy is expected to stay in the emergency room for at least several more hours tonight. They are still watching him very carefully. And when they do try to re rewarm a person from hypothermic temperatures, they have to do it very, very slowly. Now, some people were asking the question today, why do you try to bring back someone from, from near dead, from a near frozen state? Well, it's because when you get down to the core temperatures of 5 and 8 degrees, people don't know if you're alive or dead. So they have to slowly rewarm you back to a certain temperature to see if they can get a heartbeat or a cardiac rhythm. We were also told today that uh, doctors have been told to expect any other people from the mountain rescue. They are working with Providence Hospital here at Emanuel, and they will, uh, of course, evaluate those patients first to check their body core temperatures to see if there's any way to revive them. Jeff and Julie, back to you. Okay, and I know our hearts go out to those families tonight, and we'll continue to follow that story. Thanks, Paula. Here's another look at the top story of the day, the search for survivors on Mount Hood. Eight people are still lost on the mountain tonight, members of the Oregon Episcopal School Climbing Group. Searchers have found several possible snow caves today, but they were empty. One glove was found, but it's thought it might belong to one of the three people who were found early this morning. Two teenage girls are dead, and a boy is clinging to life at this hour. He's given about a 10% chance to live. Well, that drama on Mount Hood has been deeply felt at Oregon Episcopal School in Raleigh Hills. Dan Christopher was on campus today. He has this report. The campus of Oregon Episcopal was uncharacteristically quiet. Although some classes were held, attendance was not mandatory, as students were allowed to react in their own way to the uncertain fate of their classmates and teachers, who were trapped by a fierce storm while hiking on Mount Hood. I'm very worried. My, um, some of my friends are on the, on the hike, and... Uh, some of the people seem rather um, broken up by it, and there's good reason for it. Um, the group was led by Father Thomas Goman, an experienced climber, and Dean of Students, Marion Horwell. The classmates are identified as Richard Hader, Eric Sandvik, Pat McGinnis, Aaron O'Leary, Tasha Amy, Allison Litzenberger, and Brinton Clark, all 15 years old, all from Portland. Also 15-year-old Giles Thompson of Longview, Washington, and 17-year-old Susan McClave of Portland. Another student, 17-year-old Molly Shula, managed to walk to safety Tuesday with guide Ralph Summers. All were on the school's annual Mount Hood climb, which is the highlight of Oregon Episcopal's Base Camp Wilderness Experience program. Children are prepared for a day climb. They have equipment, um, clothes are checked before they go up, they um, are told what to expect, and they have very experienced people with them, and they're prepared for a day climb. Because of the tragic events on Mount Hood, Oregon Episcopal has canceled two other climbs scheduled for the next couple of weeks. The tragic twist in this year's student outing has understandably become an emotional experience for students and faculty here at Oregon Episcopal. School officials this morning assembled the student body not only to tell them about the available facts regarding the ordeal, but also about how to deal with the emotion of a trauma that hits so close to home. 
At Oregon Episcopal School in Raleigh Hills, Dan Christopher, Channel 2 News.